Good morning from the kitchen folks. Today I'm going to be making a cherry flavoured turbo cider. So here's my key ingredients in today's brew. I've got three litres of apple juice from concentrate, a jar of honey, a bit of extra sugar, spring water because the tap water in Leeds is a bit chlorine -y. and I've got these my protein cherry flavour drops which is where the cherry flavour is going to come from. These contain no calories and no fat and they're quite safe to use in your brews. So before I begin I'm just going to put a little glass of water into the microwave. It's spring water and I just want to bring this up to uh, body temperature. I'm doing that because I want to activate the yeast before I begin the brew process. I'm going to use Lalvin Champagne Sparkling Wine and Cider Yeast mixed with a little bit of this bubblegum uh, yeast which is from WHC Labs. So my water's warmed up, I'm going to add the bubblegum yeast and then I'm going to add a sprinkling of the Lalvin yeast. This is probably about two thirds of a teaspoon. The next step in this recipe is to add some spring water into a saucepan and basically fill it up about two thirds and it's heat on. As the water is warming up I'm going to start to add the honey and I'm going to add the entire jar. It won't necessarily make this a sweeter brew but it will increase the alcohol by volume. Uh, I do like a strong cider. So I'm just going to give my honey a stir. So I've just added about 200 grams of sugar into this as well which will also serve to increase the alcohol by volume. So it's time to add my honey and sugar solution into the Demijohn. Being very careful. So the beauty of turbo ciders is they're so fast and easy to make. So literally all I've got to do now is shake the carton, open it and pour. And three. Now I've purposefully overfilled the demijohn because I'm going to have to take some of this out to get the original gravity. So let's give it a good mix around. Now that makes some space in the top of my demijohn for the yeast and it will still be a small amount of space and it will form a foamy head on top called a Krausen which could come out of the airlock and if that does I'll just replace the airlock with a blow off pipe. I'm just giving my yeast mix up so I have overfilled that slightly so I'm going to tip a little bit out so I've just made a little bit of space it will either foam up or it won't and if it doesn't great and if it does like I say I can use a blow-off pipe so I put the bung and the airlock in place and I'm now just waiting for fermentation to happen CO2 to rise and the popping to start I almost forgot I need to add the cherry essence. So this is simply three pipettes of cherry essence into the demijohn. And then I'll add some more into the bottles at the bottling stage. So that's my demijohn labelled. I just need to put this away now. I'm now waiting for the temperature of the cider wort to decrease to 20 degrees and then I can take the original gravity. So I shall be back to do that shortly. And I'm looking at an original gravity of 1.076, 1076. So I'll be back in a couple of weeks time when fermentation has probably slowed down or stopped and we'll take you from there. So see you later folks. Hey folks from the kitchen, it's apple and cherry turbo cider clearing day. So this has been in the demijohn for a month. There's a very minor amount of airlock activity now. A few bubbles appearing since I've just moved it up here onto the windowsill, but this has largely started to clear at the top. There's a bit of sediment at the bottom, so it's now time to get this cleared properly so I can bottle it. So it's bung out. Siphoning tube in, 
and I'm holding the siphoning tube in place with that clip and you can see it's just above the sediment line in the bottom. So now that thumb bit. I'm quite curious to see what this tastes like as well. So we'll have a little nifter. Oh nice, the cherry comes through. Really good. Medium dry, quite strong, but the cherry definitely comes through, so I've got high hopes for this one. So as I'm siphoning into this plastic water bottle, I'm going to add Finings A. I need to add about a teaspoon. This is Clear It Wine Finings from Young's and it's a two-step process. A goes in first and then an hour later B goes in. And there we go, the bubbles in the siphoning tube indicate that this process is over. So all I've got to do now is put the lid on loosely so any gas can escape if it needs to. Leave this for an hour and then add findings B. So I'll be back in an hour. Okay, an hour has passed. And I'm not sure how much impact findings A has had. There's no visible sediment build up in the bottom. So I'm now going to transfer this back into the damage on which I've cleaned with findings B. So I've got my clean damage on in the sink, funnel in top, and now I'm going to pour in the um, cherry and apple turbo cider. I'm just pouring this now, there's no need to do it gently because I'm not trying to strain it off the sediment. And I've got about half in, so now I need to get findings B. And I need to add the same amount as I did findings A, which is about a teaspoon. It's about that amount. Thereabouts. And then I add the rest of this on top. And because I'm pouring it in through a funnel, it's all mixing nicely. So I don't need to worry about how well it's mixed in. So bung back in, damage on rinse, and that's that. So I'm going to come back to this in about a week's time and see how the findings have kicked in and hopefully I'll have a clear cider. So I'll see you then folks. Hey folks, it's apple and cherry turbo cider bottling day and here it is. Look how beautifully it's cleared. So this has had the findings in it for only three days and then we've had some really cold nights it's been down to zero degrees so I've been leaving it outside so it cold crashed which has also helped the clearing and bring all the particles down so we've got sediment in the bottom but otherwise that's a really beautiful and clear cider so it's now time to bottle. So to help a secondary fermentation I'm using carbonation drops and this will hopefully give it a sparkle. It's one drop per 250ml so in the small bottle just one and in every other bottle I need to put three because these are 750ml bottles. I'm also going to back flavour this with the My Protein Cherry Flav Drops. Now there's two full pipettes already gone into the Demijohn and I'm going to put one full pipette into each 750ml bottle and five drops in the 250ml. So 15 drops is basically one full, full pipette. As so, one, and then in the small one, just five drops, two, three, four, one for luck. So there we go. Then it's bung out, siphoning tube in. I'm using a tube clip to keep the tube in place. I've gone right to the very bottom of the demijohn. I will get a little bit of sediment in the first bottle, but hopefully after that I won't. So now the fun bit. So I'm going to put the sedimenty bit into my hydrometer tube and then onto the bottles. It always makes me want to go. I 
can really, really smell that cherry essence coming through. And there we go, the bubbles in the pipe indicate that that siphoning process is over. And I've successfully filled five 750ml bottles, one 250ml bottle and some in the hydrometer tube. And that is the mostly sedimenty bit in there, so that means that these should hopefully be nice and clear. So it's time to take the final gravity. That's always a good sign when it hits the bottom. A little bit of floating now. And that is a final gravity of 1.000. Excellent end result. Okay, so I need to work out the final alcohol by volume, the ABV of my apple and cherry cider. So I take the original gravity, which was 1.076. I subtract from that the final gravity, which was 1.000. And then I multiply the result of this by 131.25. And this gives me a final alcohol by volume of 9.975%. Let's just say 10% because after the secondary fermentation has kicked in, it's going to tweak it slightly. So 10%, I think that's a massive success. A rocket fuel cider by all means. So it's time to bung my bottles. I've got my bungs which are made of plastic softening in hot water, which just makes the job of putting them in a little bit easier. So these ones should go okay. One, two, three, <clears throat> four, and now the difficult customer, the poshest bottle, always the hardest. And it doesn't want to go, there's always one. Right, I'm going to have to come back to this one. I might have to get a different bottle. The easy one is obviously the flip top. He says. There we go. Right, this is a problem bottle. I'm going to improvise. Instead of using a proper bung, here's a Tia Maria lid. Okay, it's been cleaned. It doesn't smell of anything. And hopefully I can push this in. That's it. Right, it's in. They all need to be secured with cages. So the cages that I use, like the bottles, um, are recycled cages. And that will prevent any unfortunate missile accidents, which happens. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. I'm just going to rinse my bottles under the tap now to get any sticky residue off. I'll let them dry before labelling them. Some really nice bottles as well. Look at this one. Look at the design on it and the shape of the bottle. It's really beautiful. Art. And the flip tops are just fantastically practical. Okay, I'm just going to leave these to dry before printing out the labels. So all that remains now is for me to print the labels off. Stick them on. There we go. I like to take pride on the appearance of the bottles as much as I do what's inside them. So now the bottles are labelled, they're on my conditioning shelves and this is a fairly straightforward and simple idea. I've simply got a low wattage and very slim electric radiator at the back here. A set of shelves which I've put some wood on either side so the middle bottles don't roll off and I've strengthened underneath also to take the pressure off the wheels with a wooden chock. Just here is a temperature. 
a thermometer which connects to this plug and when the temperature drops below 19 it kicks in and it turns on which turns the heater on when it gets to 21 it turns off so it's always between 19 and 21 and that's just enough for these to condition and for them to sparkle so with the heat that they'll now get and the fermentation drops that are inside them that's what will give these drinks the sparkle that I want them to have and you can see the temperature on the top shelf is 21 and the temperature on the bottom shelf is 20 and I rotate these around so they're not always in the same place so this is where it will be now for the next two weeks and then I'll be sampling it so I'll see you then Evening from the kitchen folks, it's apple and cherry cider opening night, quite excited about this one. It's been conditioning for two weeks, hopefully it's going to have a bit of fizz, nice flavour, some bubbles. I can see already that the bung has risen slightly from when I bottled it, so that's a good sign. I'm just trying to get this off, the cage off, without the bung flying out, just in case it's overly gassy. Let's see how it comes out. Oh yeah, definite pop there. Smells very good. Let's have a look. Really nice little sparkle, delicate sparkle, not overly fizzy, sparkling. Smells fantastic, it really does smell like cherry, the flavour drops are brilliant. It's delicious. I'd call it a medium sweet. The sweetness is from the MyProtein flavour drops, without them it wouldn't have been a medium sweet, it would have probably been a medium dry. It's really very very good, very flavoursome. Perfect for a summer evening. Yeah, really, really nice. Glad I made this one. I'll definitely make it again and I recommend it. Cheers, folks. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.